Today, I want to give you guys a shocking behind the scenes look at my Etsy business. Hey everyone, what is happening? Welcome back to the Handmade and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, LL. Glad to be back with you guys hanging out, talking about Etsy, online business, all that good stuff. Today, I got a really good episode for you guys. I decided to do a super deep dive in my Etsy business and really kind of see some different stats and some things, some trends, some things that have went on with my business over the last nine years uh, to get a better understanding of, of what's happened uh, and also to help convey that to you guys so you guys know, okay, these are things that may or may not be happen to my business as well. These are expectations that I may or that I should have or, or maybe I won't have, but either way, uh, a lot of people don't talk about these things, these deep dive things that I'm going to talk about today. And some of them are pretty shocking, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, a lot of this is kind of stats based, but some of these things I guarantee you're going to be blown away by. So let's dive right in and uh, go over some of these things that I've found in my Etsy business. Some of these shocking Etsy business uh details, stats, whatever you want to call it. So like I said, my main Etsy shop has been around for nine years, nine years, or almost 10 years, almost a decade uh, of doing Etsy. This is pretty crazy. So my main Etsy shop is Living Limitless Clothing. It's a graphic uh, clothing and apparel company. Um, I do a lot of different designs based on my own interest, my own interests uh, and things that I like and enjoy. It has pivoted a lot over uh, over the nine years, and I'm always continuing to, to pivot and look for more ways to grow and improve my Etsy shop, as many of you guys probably are doing the same thing. I also have two other active Etsy shops as well. Not shocking, a lot of you guys have multiple Etsy shops. Uh, I think it's important just to be careful with that because when you're starting out, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas and want to start a lot of different shops. You get overwhelmed really quickly and all your shops fail. That's a big mistake that I see people make. Um, so just be careful with opening multiple Etsy shops. But if you're ready for it, um, you can have multiple successful Etsy shops in different niches. So it could be a good thing, uh, but just be careful in the navigation of it and the timing of it. But what really is kind of uh, not amazing, but really I want you guys to understand when it comes to that, uh, when, when it comes to Etsy shops is I've also had three failed Etsy shops. Three Etsy shops that just didn't work out. I opened them. I either didn't make any sales or I really didn't take much action and kind of just let them wither away. Um, some of them, I just they just didn't work. And that is normal too. You may have to pivot. You may have to try more than one idea, more than one niche, more than one Etsy shop. If you look at most successful people out there, They've failed a lot. A lot of successful people have failed in multiple business ventures, multiple ideas, multiple things. There is no successful person out there that succeeded at everything. Most of them, and I, I'm going to say all of them, have failed and probably have failed a lot, especially the self-made entrepreneurs, the self-made business people. You go and look back, you see their success now. You don't see all the failures because no one pays attention to that, but I guarantee you they failed and failed a lot. Some of them have failed miserably and lost millions and millions of dollars. Uh, and then they, what uh, created their success is that they never gave up. You can never be uh, a failure if you never give up. So just remember that. And that's uh, always something that sticks in the back of my mind. Right, so the next thing that is pretty amazing is the fact that I have right now in my shop 850 active listings. All right, you're like, well, that's that's pretty good. I mean, it's taken me nine years to get that many. But what's really kind of amazing is the fact that I have 1,388, 1,388, I don't know why I said 1,388, I can, math is hard. Um, 1,388 inactive listings. That's a, that's a lot. That's almost double my active listings that are inactive. And what are inactive listings? They're, they're listings that aren't active anymore. Now, granted, a percentage of those are seasonal listings that I don't leave up all the all year round. Um, probably maybe 150 to 200 of those are seasonal listings that I will list again. But the other remaining inactive listings are listings that didn't work. 
they I inactivated them because they weren't working. Uh, they didn't make any sales. They were failures. So I've failed almost double uh, of the time, you know, and I kept going. I kept finding active listings that would work. Now, mind you, just because your listings aren't performing always doesn't mean that you immediately take them down. I mean, this was a long process. Some of those I've changed, you know, some of those I pivoted, um, you know, my, my subject matter, my ideas kind of changed. So I took them down for that reason. Some of them didn't work. Um, there, there's various reasons, but the, mo the majority of them uh, I'm not selling because they weren't successful. So you, you're gonna have to try a lot. You're gonna have to put up a lot of listings. Each listing you try, you're gonna get better at it. You're gonna get better at it. Um, but just know a big portion of your listings are, are probably not gonna work out, but you have to keep trying. All right, so keeping on dealing with uh, the listings and some of these amazing listing um, stats that I have here. Uh, when it comes to success with listings, this is what I thought was amazing too. I have 17 listings that have over $2,000 in revenue each. 17 of them with over $2,000 in revenue. Pretty good, right? Those are all pretty good winners. If, if you have a listing make over making a couple hundred dollars, that's pretty good. If you have it making over a thousand, really good. Over 2,000, extraordinarily good, right? So that is a good thing. But it took me a long time to find those 17 listings that were huge winners. I have three listings that have done over $5,000 extraordinarily well, right? I wish I could make make that more than three. <laughs> that's always what I'm trying to do. Uh, if I could turn that three into six to 10, whatever. Um, that's, you're always trying to find more winners like that. I have one listing that has done over $10,000. I mean, those are, that's that's your treasure, right? That's your, your gold that you finally have found. I love gold. Uh, the 10K on one listing, I mean, that's amazing. Um, so I was, I was pretty, I was pretty intrigued to see kind of those stats for, cause I never did that deep dive analyzing all my listings to kind of see which ones were that big of winners. All right, so kind of along uh, the same lines of success, we're gonna, we're gonna change, turn the tables here with this. Uh, when looking at my listings again, I have 110 of my active listings have zero dollars in revenue they've made me no money they are losers 110 that's 13 percent of my active listings are big fat losers <laughs> they have not made any money um but i keep them active you know because some of them are newer some of those may make money uh some of those are in really good niches and the reason why you want to keep listings that aren't doing so hot is A, you can adjust them, you can edit them to try to make them sell. B, you wanna leave them up to kind of see what they're going to do. C, they are attracting traffic that's bouncing to other listings. That's the reason why if you have a chunk of listings that aren't performing, you don't wanna go in and deactivate them, you will 100% see a dip across the board in your shop. Your views, your visits, your favorites, your sales will all decline because you are taking a chunk of that data, the algorithm, the, the, the data that's feeding the algorithm, you're taking a chunk of that and you're taking it away from the algorithm. And that is going to hurt your shop overall. So you're better off leaving those listings up there and having a chunk of your listings up there that aren't performing well because they're attracting traffic and are bouncing to your other listings. They're giving the algorithm data that's helping fill out your niche, making you an expert in your particular niche, your subject matter, all that stuff is working together behind the scenes to help your shop. So just keep that in mind and think about that before you go in and deactivate huge chunks of listings. Will you deactivate listings from time to time? Absolutely. You've seen me do it 13 over 1300 times, but I had never did it in chunks and I never did it. Um, you know, I never did it kind of willy nilly. It was always a strategy behind it. Um, and I did it periodically and very strategically. So keep that. Keep that in mind um, when you do find, you do analyze your listings and a lot of them aren't selling or doing well, you still have time to, to hopefully bring them back and uh, make them sell, but just keep in mind that they are going to still work in your favor behind the scenes. All right, so now bouncing from a negative back to a positive, this is a whirlwind episode, <laughs> lots of negatives and positives, which is 
that's running a business. That's that's business in general. Highs and lows, ups and downs, peaks and valleys. So in looking at my shop, my total revenue so far uh, is $497,000, almost 500,000, almost half a million. I still remember my first sale nine years ago, $25, I remember it. Did I ever think that I would hit half a million dollars nine years later? Absolutely not. It is amazing to me that I've made that much money on Etsy specifically. And it all was from me deciding to take action in my shop and never give up. And it was slow. My first three to four years was extremely slow in my business. I could have easily given up many, many times when I was working full time and I was coming home and doing my Etsy shop at night or earn my lunch breaks. And I was seeing no reward. I was seeing no sales for the work that I was putting in. I could have easily given up and I didn't. I kept going and then sales started to build and build and build things improved um, and then I finally got to start reaping the rewards of all my work that I was putting in so that almost half a million dollars in sales uh, that equates to um, that's total revenue that equates to 21,413 sales individual items sold or 20,000 items sold 20,000 items that I touched with my hands and packed and shipped to people that is a lot that is a lot of sales. That's a lot of work behind the scenes um, that has added up over the years. Uh, so I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, and it's pretty humbling to take a look at that um, because I know, you know, people may see that and it looks good on the surface, but I know that it was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. It was really, really tough to get there. It's still tough from time to time. Is it easier now? Yes, but it's still, there's still ups and downs. But at the beginning, it was extraordinarily tough. Lots of delayed gratification of working, putting in those hours and not getting any sales or revenue back. And that's where people have to kind of stick to their guns, stay the course because that stuff will come. But unfortunately, most people don't make it through um, that those tough times of pushing that boulder up the hill. All right, moving on from that, back to another uh, another negative. This this one This one hurts. This one was extraordinarily painful. I had one product one like you like before i have one active product that's done over ten thousand dollars i had another product that did better i had another product that did eleven thousand dollars but it's now inactive it is sitting in my inactive list why because what i was selling the actual apparel the actual tank top that i was selling was discontinued by the manufacturer they do not make it anymore you absolutely cannot get it um, the design, the graphic design was my own. I created it. The tank top that I was selling it on was discontinued. So while I still do sell that design on other apparel, I do not have access to that tank top. And I do not, I had to deactivate the listing that has all that history, that positive history, those sales, all the visits, all the favorites that were killing it with the algorithm. I had to deactivate it and say goodbye to my best selling item ever. And that sucks. That really sucked. That was super painful. And this made me, looking back at it, made me have flashbacks because I honestly didn't, re I didn't remember it. I knew it did well, but I didn't remember it being the best. And going back and looking at it, you made me tear, <laughs> made me cry a little bit. Um, I uh, I was a little sad going back. So that those, those are the kinds of things that happen. Uh, and I kept moving on, you know, I had to pivot, but man, that was painful. So just know that you may have that happen. Um, and it's, uh, it's just one of those things. It's one of those things. All right, so moving on, uh, the other kind of interesting things uh, that I found in my business uh, that maybe you want to look at too, the amount of reviews left, I have almost, well, it's 14.31% of customers leave reviews. So pff, that's not very many, right? It doesn't seem like very many. I think you know, the benchmark is usually, I think, between 10 and 20%. Obviously, the higher, the better, especially if you're a newer shop. You want more people to leave reviews because that helps your business. The algorithm likes to see five-star reviews. Customers like to see five-star reviews. So that's why it's important to reach out to those customers, especially early on when you're not inundated with orders, to check on their order or check on them receiving their order, make sure they're happy, and then ask them politely to leave a review. You can use, uh, you can do this on your own through the messenger system within Etsy. You can do it through 
uh, a message, a third party messenger like Alora, they have that feature where you can send out messages uh, to your customers that are uh, templates. It makes it really fast, really easy to do that. It offers a layer of customer service and it also helps you get more reviews. The more reviews, the better, especially if you're a newer shop. It will really, really help you. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's where I'm at as far as reviews. Do I wish it was higher? Yes, but still, um, it's something, right? It's, uh, you, you know, it's, uh, something that you can look at and work on, you know, going forward. Uh, I also thought it was interesting. 4% of my customers are repeat customers. They've bought from me more than once. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I think, you know, I'm not sure what the average benchmark is for repeat customers, but any percent there I think is a win. You always want as many repeat customers as possible. You can get more repeat customers through coupons, through um, you know, through good customer service, um, coupons on your packing slips. So there's some things, there's some strategies that you can do to get more repeat customers. Uh, and repeat customers are great. It adds to your bottom line um, and it shows that you're doing things the right way because they wanna come back and spend their hard earned dollars on your shop and give you their money again. Uh, the last one I have for you, and this is, you know, the, a lot of people talk about conversion, sales conversion rate. So my average conversion rate is 2.5%. Uh, not very high, but considering my niche, I think it's on average. You wanna, I think the, the, the benchmark is usually one to 3%, I think is the average with an Etsy, but it varies between niches. It can be higher for some niches, lower for other niches. My niche is extremely competitive. Um, it, it, I don't want to say saturated. It is saturated, but you can. I've shown that you can still make a lot of money in a saturated niche, uh, but there's a lot more competition. Conversion is going to be a lot lower. You're going to need more visits um, to make sales. It's just the name of the game. That's my conversion. What I, you know, It's one of those things I would always like it to be higher, but it is, uh, it is right on average. So how do you figure out conversion rate? Just so you guys know, um, this is basically for every 100 visits you get, it's however many sales you have for those 100 visits. So for every 100 visits I get, I get two and a half sales. How you figure out your conversion rate is you take sales divided by visits, and that is your conversion rate. In your dashboard within Etsy, they give you your conversion rate, but it does you no good if you don't know what it means. So that's where you can set the benchmark. Um, you want at least a 1% conversion. If you're lower than 1%, you're, you, you're you not doing very good. You really got to get that up above 1%. one uh, So look at your shop as a whole. If you don't have 100 visits yet and you don't have any sales, well, you just don't have enough visits to possibly get sales yet. So you need to give it a little bit more time. So you can look at it per individual listing. You can look at it per your whole shop um, and preferably look at it on at least a 30-day period. Um, don't look at it every day because there's ebbs and flows with any stat on Etsy. Uh, but those are those are the main things, the sh kind of the shocking behind the scenes data points and stats and observations that I really wanted to bring to you guys today. So, you know, OK, what's going on with a shop that's made that's been around for nine years and has half a million dollars in sales? What are kind of some of the behind the scenes numbers that kind of make up that shop that make up those those things? So if you're a newer shop, or even if you've been around for a while, you can maybe look at what I've done in my business and see, are you doing better? Hopefully you are. Are you not doing as good? Or you just need more time? Um, maybe you can use some of those benchmarks to help guide you, to help give you a beacon. I don't know, why, why do I keep saying give you a beacon to guide you? Um, I don't know why I, that's in my head. <laughs> but give you a roadmap to follow, give you a target to shoot for. Any other analogy I can think of, I'm going to throw in. Uh, but th I wanted to bring that to you today so you know uh, those things, what's going on. And it was a good exercise for me as well to kind of take that look, that deep dive in my shop to kind of see some of those things as far as what's going on. Some of them, like I said, were shocking. Some of those like, man, I need to work on that. I need to set those goals this year and get some of those numbers up. Um, some of those KPIs, as we called it in the corporate world that I don't do anymore. Um, I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> um, KPIs, key performance indicator, if you don't know that. Uh, but yeah, all those data points are, are basically KPIs. Uh, but that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed that behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes episode. 
If you guys like the show, please like, comment, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, give, leave me a review if you're on the podcast. If you're on the podcast, leave a review and then go to YouTube and subscribe. Either way, I appreciate you guys listening, watching, all that good stuff. I'll be back soon with another really good episode for you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you.